Hello Internet, today we're going to be playing with our flying game again. Uh, specifically we're going to be working on a shader for one of the effects that I kind of want in the game. Uh, so one of the, the things that I've been playing with has been a like a side scrolling shooter that's sort of what we've been making. Uh, but I've been playing with the idea of sort of like a contrast as sort of the, the main mechanic of it. Uh, so you have like a white and a black uh, setting I guess. And you can switch between those at will but you can only damage things of the opposite color if that makes any sense uh, so you can like that that's that's just the way that that works um and so i want some way to kind of fade between them i've done like a, a fade before for the effect uh when i tried this idea out a little bit ago to see if it, it actually worked by a little bit i mean three years ago <laughs> um but but the idea was just it literally just faded back and forth and that was all right but it wasn't right it wasn't what i was looking for so i want something that's a little bit more dramatic so i think we can kind of take sort of what we did with the dissolving shader except have that be a cutoff between two colors and have it be a little bit more i don't know uh explicit i guess in how in how it works so i have this color fade shader just a normal surface shader if you aren't familiar with how to get a surface shader just create shader standard surface shader there you go It'll get you the same thing, and then whatever you name it is going to be the name of your shader. So if we go up here, we've got our color fade shader. Let's just call that color fade. And we should be able to use everything because this is going to fi uh, flip between two colors. So I'm going to need another color, but the main texture should work. That should be like our mask effectively. So we'll have a primary color and a secondary color. Apparently copy and pasting is really slow. There we go. So secondary color and our primary color. And then this will default to uh, white and this one will default to white as well, I guess. Uh, it doesn't particularly matter what they default to because we're going to be changing them anyway. So uh, I, I don't know why I'm talking about that anyway getting confused let's go there primary color and so this is actually going to give us something that to reference in our shader so the primary and secondary color are actually the references in the shader this is just some unity fluff and now we need to actually start using these uh, so if I just swap in primary oops that's not right if I just swap in primary color here everything that was working normally with the shader should work uh, so just quickly, I'll give you sort of a sample of what that looks like. It's going to be boring, but that's sort of the idea. Material, uh, color fade. And so you can just assign a shader by just clicking and dragging. It takes a little bit because that's just how that works, but it should work. And then uh, this is the game, so we can't do that. But I should just be able to click and drag this over there. And now we have our color fade shader attached to this with a primary and secondary color and so I can change my primary color to say red and it works. I'm going to leave it as uh, white with the secondary as black and everything else should be good. The other thing I'm going to do is I have these two uh, gradient textures. This one I suspect will actually work so it's got white all the way at the bottom and black at the top uh, and then it should kind of fade between that so We'll kind of assign this to our our mesh. In this case, it's just a cube, so not as interesting. But then we can use the the texture as sort of a lookup to see where uh, whether we should transition or not between that color. This is the same thing, just without. There's an extra gradient pass in the first one to make sure that it's white all the way at the bottom and black all the way at the top. This one doesn't. The second one doesn't have that. Uh, so it's just the noise uh, with a multiplied gradient. So e I think both of those will work, but I think the first one is going to work better just because it's white and black. So we'll assign that and you get this. Uh, these are multiplied. So again, if I make this red, get our red thing. But we're never actually going to draw this texture. That's not That's not the idea here. Instead, we want to use this as sort of a mask. So I'm going to actually take this off. And we're going to have just the mask uh, color, uh, mask strength. 
And this can actually just be one thing. We're just going to look at the red texture for this or red uh, color part. So we don't really need all the other bits. And then we can just have primary color times our mask strength uh, plus one minus the mask strength times our secondary color which means that it will be the primary color where the mask is strong and then it will kind of fade as a gradient to the secondary color. So uh, what we've done is kind of made a fancy gradient here, or it should be a fancy gradient, that goes between one color and the next. So if I make this say orange and this one blue, if this works, I would expect it to fade between those. Obviously it's not working, because I've screwed something up. Uh, looks like C is undefined because uh, it's used in the alpha. So set that at one. The alpha isn't gonna be used in this, so we can just keep that at one constantly. But this should work now. And now we have this gradient between these two colors instead of between everything else. That's still not what we want though. <laughs> um, I want this to be like a hard line between one and the other, maybe with an effect, like a, a line for effect in between the two but it should be a hard line. So there's going to be a float, oops, that's not right, <laughs> that we're going to need to add. Uh, and so this is going to be our transition. I don't know if that's the best name for it, but we'll, we'll start there and we can move on. Uh, and so we'll start at 0.5. Sure, th that should cut it right in the middle or middle-ish. And so this transition is going to be sort of the cutoff point. So there we go, transition. And now instead of doing this, which was sort of easy, I'm going to create a color. Uh, and I'm gonna to have to do some math sort of on the fly here, so this might not actually work out. So we'll do that. There's our transition just for the sake of it. And I think we can do, do that. Uh, will that work? Maybe. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to think of a math formula that will get this to work. Uh, what I'm thinking is if we do the transition uh, is greater than the mask strength, then it should be the primary color. If that, if that make, uh, less than so white will be primary first black will be a secondary first or will be more secondary if that makes any sense uh so this will be our it's less than the mask strength now there's no such thing as a boolean uh, to my knowledge in these shaders you get a, a value uh, so this will will return either zero or one. Zero if it's false one if it's true which means we can use that uh and sort of say so if it's one, then it's primary. And if it's zero, we need some function that will convert that so that it works for the secondary color. And I think we can just use what we already have here, right? So instead of doing all of this fun stuff, I should just be able to plug that in, making this up on the fly so this might not work. Uh, but mask selection, we'll do that. And then mask selection gets multiplied in here instead of doing any oops, instead of doing anything else. And now if I did my math correctly, that should get us a hard line somewhere in the middle. Like that. Okay, that's not really the middle, but we tried. <laughs> uh, if I switch textures, that this one will probably, that's not even close to the middle. Huh. Does work though. Not, uh, there's going to be some problems with this, which is why I'm kind of uh, hesitating. I'm also going to change this from a float to a range. Uh, 0 0.1, like so. And that will just give us a nice slider bar so I don't go like super negative or whatever. Because I want to get down to 0 uh, relatively easily. And kind of just demonstrate we still have orange and we don't want that. That shouldn't be happening. The reason it's happening is because there's white, like full white which is just going to be a value of one, which means we have off by one errors. Uh, it doesn't look like we have anything that's causing it on the other side, but theoretically that could happen as well. 
And so we need something that will kind of fix that. <laughs> so in order to get rid of this, I'm kind of, it, it's sort of a questionable solution, but I'm thinking of just kind of shrinking down this mask strength. So mask strength equals mask strength times 0 0.98 plus 0 0.01. So effectively just taking really small numbers, we're shrinking it by, uh, this will shrink uh, by 1% on either side. That's why we have this shift. Uh, shifts by, it shrinks it by 2% and then moves it one to the right. Uh, so it's only 1.1% on either side. I'm thinking that will solve our off by one error. It might be a little bit overkill, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal and the effect will still exist. So yeah, and that's sort of what I was going for. It, you can kind of see like the swimming pattern just based on that. Uh, and so then we can just animate this transition and everything works. Uh, let's see. We've been recording for 11 minutes. Let's just do the, the animation here because why not? <laughs> So transition, uh, we'll call this effects. And this is more just for, for samples and testing. So we're not going to be super precise about this. It doesn't need to be. Uh, so transition effect. And so we're just going to attach this to our cube. There we go. Go to our transition effect. Uh, we're going to need a reference to the material. So uh, since this is more of a sample of how to do this rather than what I'm going to be doing, we're just going to make a public material and a public pool of our active uh, primary. Sure. And then a private float of our current transition state. And so the idea here uh, is we want to modify this transition state based on the primary. So we could do either like a, a smooth and kind of move it a constant velocity towards it, or we could have sort of a more of a smooth ramped transition. If we want to do it smooth, we would do like a public float uh, speed or transition speed, and then just add that or subtract that based on the primary variable. Otherwise we could do a lerp. I'm going to just add a speed here. So transition speed. And then in the update, uh, if primary and else <laughs> do this. So if, if we are our primary, we want that to be one. So we want that to transition up to one. So uh, what's the best way to do that? Transition, oops, sorry. Current transition state equals our math dot uh, min. Because we're going up to one, so the min of one, which will make it make sure it doesn't go above one. And then the current transition state plus the transition speed times our time delta. And so that will just move it up. And then we just need the opposites of those for here. So this will be our max of zero. And we're going to subtract. I don't know why I have this, this hand here. It's throwing me off. OK, there we go. <laughs> My cursor was all wrong, and it was weird. Uh, anyway, this is going to do a linear movement between the two, and we can change how fast that happens with our transition speed. And we'll just set the current transition state equal to uh, primary question mark one or zero. So that's just the ternary operator. So if it's primary, it will start at one. And if it's secondary, it will start at zero, which just means it starts in the current color of whatever it is. Now this should work, but it's not going to actually change the material at all. So what we need is this transition variable. And we are going to do a material dot set float like this of the current transition state. 
<clears throat> and what this does is actually goes and accesses this variable from our shader. Uh, note, you do not actually need this up here. So this, again, is just a Unity thing. This properties bit, that's all Unity. Unity is going to use that in the inspector to kind of build you and get some metadata about your shader stuff. But you don't actually need it down here. Uh, so these are the names that you're actually going to be using. And if they're not there, it's not going to work. So transition, current transition state, that just sort of syncs it back up. And so theoretically, that should be all we need to do. And if I did that right, we'll now have a material that will kind of update as we sw uh, swap that primary flag. So color fade, set that. And we'll do this in a uh, 20th of a second or a fifth of a second. So transition speed equals five. Start this up. And now it should, <laughs> hopefully, all work. All right, so we're running primary. There we go. And now we get these uh, transitions between them in a pretty nice and fast way. Looks a little bit better if we slow it down a little bit, but you get the idea. <clears throat> there is a jump uh, that is happening. You probably have seen that a little bit right at the beginning and right at the end. Like it'll happen less there. Uh, but the reason that jump is there is because we, we shrunk it and we have that one value. All of those are at the peak of what they what they are, which means they're going to all go away at the same time. Uh, it seems very obvious right at the top here. So you can see we lose all of that. that that's just because of the, the gradient we're using has that characteristic. So we could probably create a better image that didn't have that, and that would probably fix it. But for now, there we go. But that gives us a way to kind of, I don't know, animate this and do all sorts of fun things. And it's pretty, pretty straightforward. That's a little bit fast. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have suggestions on how we could improve this or different ideas on how to make this a little bit better or change this in any other way. I'd love to hear it. Uh, I have been a little bit absent lately, uh, just doing a bunch of other things that kind of came up, uh, mostly things that I, I knew beforehand and just didn't say anything about. Uh, but I'm hoping that in, in July we do, I'm hoping to get a video out every weekday. That's my goal. Uh, no promises, but that's that's sort of what I'm shooting for. So try to hold me to that. And if I'm not keeping up with that, let me know. Uh, if you guys have suggestions on things you want to see or things you think we should build or just random ideas you want to throw out there, let me know or join the Discord and you can talk about them and we can either figure out a way where you can build it or I can pick it up and throw something together like this. So yeah, that's it for this video. So till next time. See you internet.